Moving on to the Sri Lanka versus Pakistan series that uh, uh, was uh, squared up at one all, and uh, I think uh, one of the main things that came up in that series was uh, how both teams were dependent on certain players. You know, in batting, Sri Lanka was dependent on Chandimal, and uh, while Pakistan was dependent on Babar and Shafiq. While similarly, Sri Lanka was uh, highly dependent on uh, Prabhat Jaisuria to bowl their overs. So, uh, do uh, do you think uh, it was really the case of uh, uh, dependence that was created by the teams themselves, or uh, do you think uh, Sri Lanka went uh, and decided to have uh, the spinning pitches that would suit their certain bowlers itself, and you know, in this case, the spinners that uh, made made them over re- made them rely on Prabhat Jaisuria. Uh, what was the case in your opinion? Like- Sri Lanka definitely prepared spinning pitches because they felt that was the best way to win. Pakistan's own spinning stocks are not very good right now. And yeah, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka have better spinners. And it's what they've been doing for the last while as well. I can't remember the last time they prepared a more pacer-friendly pitch with the expectation for their pacers to take wickets. Right? It wasn't even that long ago where they prepared pitches against England where they bowled like six overs of seam in the entire match. And that was when they had a captain who was a fast bowler. Yeah, this is just what Sri Lanka does because they produce much better spinners than they produce fast bowlers. So they see that as their way to win. Particularly against a team like Pakistan that's mainly relying on their faster bowlers. And you know, going into the dependence talk you were bringing up, I don't think it's that big of a deal if a team is more dependent on a couple of players than on other ones because you know obviously each team not all 11 players are created equal on a team so each team would uh, you know expect more contributions from a few players than from others uh yeah in this case um in this case when uh when you have a bit of a struggling batting lineup as fox ended you do sort of wonder you know, if chopping and changing is the way to go, like Pakistan ended up doing in the second test, where they they dropped Azhar and they moved everyone else up one, you know, just something they may not have wanted to do. It's been something England's done a lot as well in, in red ball cricket over the last few years. They've moved Joe Root around a lot, you know, just filling whatever gap they have because he's their best player. That's what Pakistan have been doing with uh, Babar Azam lately in Sri Lanka. And... You know, I feel like, you know, because Pakistan are dependent on Bob Razum to score the run, so that's fine. But I feel like if you're dependent on a player to do that, you should probably keep them at the position they're most comfortable in. And for Bobber, that's that's number four, two down. And I think he should have stayed there instead of coming in at number three for the, for the second test. And, you know, he did well at number three. You know, I know people are going to say that, you know, he did well at three, so why not keep him at three? Like he, you know, if he does he does well at three because he's a good batter, but he's better at four, so he should probably stay at four. And you get someone else to play at three. Now that uh, we are on this topic of uh, moving the players around, uh, do you think uh, uh, this has all come down to the World Test Championship? I know uh, for teams like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan and South Africa, it is pretty much, uh, you know, try to win each game and uh, expect the other teams to lose theirs. But... Uh, at the same time, I think uh, that uh, has also pushed all, all of these changes, if uh, I may. Uh, you know, as you said, uh, Babar batting at, uh, you know, Babar batting higher than he usually does. Even Rizwan, I don't think he used to bat four before he he, bat, he started batting that high in this series. So do you think uh, this whole, uh, you know, uh, attempt at uh, getting instant results uh, due to, you know, the... World Test Championship implications is uh, causing issues with the batting orders, especially given that uh, no one would be given a consistent chance, uh, assuming that everyone, every team wants, you know, the things to work well instantly rather than give uh, people time to, you know, settle in their role. Yeah, like the, the, the World Test Championship has really played a part in that because, you know, every game is a lot more important than it used to be. So in this case in the past, Pakistan probably would have been okay with giving Azarali an extra match, with giving 
you know, maybe waiting a little bit longer on uh, Salman Aga because they don't need to win this game. So, you know, if Uzzer doesn't score, he can still save the match. But uh, because they had to win this game to have a decent shot at making the final, they were more ruthless with selection and dropped, dropped the player perhaps quicker than they might have in the past and tried someone else. And, you know, it's the same thing with Sri Lanka, with playing a lot of different players. You just, especially with the teams that are playing fewer games, like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Bangladesh, you just sort of throw things at the wall and hope something sticks, because where, when else are you going to get a chance to? You know, if you save Salman Aga, or if you save, uh, if you save the extra spinner for an extra, for the next match, you know, maybe that's already too late to turn things around and make the final. Because this is a format where it doesn't really matter where you finish, as long as you finish in the top two. So if you can't finish in the top two, then any changes are already being made too late. And, uh, you know, talking about uh, Pakistan and their uh, batting lineup situation. Uh, actually, during the Australia versus Pakistan series, uh, the test series, that is, uh, me and Ghostly talked about this previously. That, uh, you know, I think uh, Pakistan has had this whole case of uh, either being too, uh, you know, either being uh, too rash with their decision making or too light with their decision making in recent times. I mean, uh, if you look at the whole Australian series, uh, you'd see uh, them, them being rather relaxed with the whole situation, you know, even though uh, uh, the first two tests uh, tests were drawn in their own way. I mean, the first was a rather easy draw. The second one, Pakistan had to fight for it. But uh, back then, Pakistan seemed like they want to test the things out rather than, you know, be in a rush to change things up rather quickly. But uh, uh, rather pretty soon, they have changed their approach. So, uh, you know, I was thinking that maybe this is the effect of uh, the World Test Championship. But do you think... Uh, it was uh, right uh, originally for them, the original approach that they had tried in, in the Australia series, where they wanted the people to play at certain spot, regardless of failure or success. And them suddenly changing it up here in uh, Sri Lanka was uh, wrong on some level. Yeah, I think the... Uh, I'm, I'm someone that likes seeing players given a long run in the side. I would rather a player be given one, two, one match too many than one match too few. So I, I would prefer what we were doing against Australia. But I think that sort of also just speaks to another facet of the World Test Championship is just how quickly things change, right? Like during the Australia series, Pakistan were a lot more relaxed about how they approached the tournament because the way things shaped up, it didn't matter that much to win 3-0 against Australia. You could afford some slip-ups and Pakistan still had a decent chance of making the final. But uh, since the Australia series has happened, Pakistan lost that series 1-0. Uh, since, uh, since all that happened, the table has changed. And now Pakistan's route to the final is a lot more... It needs a lot more uh, ruthlessness along the way. You know, again, like it's the schedule's been very unbalanced. Pakistan, the way the way the table shaped up when Pakistan played Australia is very different from how it would how it is now. And you know, I don't know if there's really a fix for that with the World Test Championship because of how the cricket season works everywhere. Uh, but yeah, it's just you know both things are products of the World Test Championship, and I think it would be interesting to look into a lot more closely. Yeah, especially for these teams, because I forget the schedule off the top of my head, off the top of the head for the next couple cycles, but I'm pretty sure Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and uh, New Zealand, South Africa are playing few are playing the fewest tests in those cycles. So especially for those teams who aren't playing that much, it would be interesting to see, uh, you know, they have a deeper dive into to how their positions change from series to series because they aren't playing that many games. So each individual game matters a lot more to them. And that can really change the thinking in, in terms of the uh, in terms of selection, in terms of uh, how they manage injuries and form. 
Yeah, and uh, on a similar note, uh, there's also that, uh, you know, as you said, uh, there are teams like Pakistan or Sri Lanka who play fewer tests even in this cycle, if I'm not wrong, just like they'll next do the same in the next. But uh, uh, there's also a side of it where we realize that, uh, you know, if you are playing fewer tests and uh, if you, uh, you are playing, let's say, against a relatively stronger uh, teams, if you uh, then no. Uh, there's a chance that, uh, you know, uh, one bad away series or one good away series can change things up for you. So I guess uh, it is uh, up to that as well. I mean, uh, uh, in this uh, cycle, Pakistan had uh, West Indies and uh, Sri Lanka for them. And uh, even the Australia series was at home. So looks like uh, even though there's a part uh, that, uh, you know, uh, fewer tests might be... Uh, an advantage or might be a disadvantage seems like uh, uh, Pakistan had a chance of doing much better than they are doing right now in this cycle especially yeah when the when I first saw the schedule back in like 2019 or whatever I, I thought Pakistan had a decent chance of making the final in the second cycle and, and disappointed in how it's gone out but you know, it's just the way the game works